Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, I will show you how to create multi-step modern form experiences in Power Apps. We will leverage one of the new screen templates to frame our modern form, break it down into a multi-step form experience, and also highlight the status of the step we are on. So let's check it out in action. In my scenario, I have a SharePoint list called Travel Requests. The list includes columns to track details about a travel request that a user can make. To create an app, I will start with a page design. I'll pick one of the responsive layouts, header main section footer. First, I'll connect to my data source. I'll be leveraging modern controls. So under general settings, I'll turn on modern controls and themes. In the header container, I'll go and insert the modern header control. I'll upload a logo for the header. I'll set the title for the header control. In the main container, I'll insert the modern table control connected to my SharePoint list. The table control alignment and container stretch flexible height on. So it takes the full real estate available in the main container. To create a multi-step form experience, I'll click on new screen and pick one of the modern screen templates called approval request. This template has a form. This is a modern form control. I will connect it to the travel request SharePoint list. I would like to make this a multi-step form experience. To do that, for my screens on visible property, I'll use the set function, set, and create a variable called where step and set its value to one. I will use this variable to define which data cards in my form control should be visible based upon the value of that variable. In my form control, if I hold the control key, I can start selecting multiple data cards. In my scenario, I've selected three data cards that I would like to show as part of my first step. For the visible property of these cards, I will use the formula where step equal to one. Next, I'll select the data cards that I would like to show in step number two. And the visible property for these data cards, where step equal to two. I'll create a third step and start selecting the data cards that I would like to show as part of that step. Visible property where step equal to three. And at the end, I have the attachments data card. The visible property for this card, I will set to where step equal to four. Now, if you notice, none of the data cards are visible. That's because the variable is set when I visit this screen. So let's go back to the first screen and let's add a button that allows the user to create a new travel request. In the screen, I have this footer container. I will move this up and in here, I will go and insert a modern button control. It's text. I will set to new request. I'll increase its width on select of this button. I will go ahead and reset my form control. The form in my scenario is called approval form one. So I'll select that and then navigate the user to my screen, screen number two. If I preview the app, click new request, it leads me to the form screen. Note, this is my multi-step form experience. 
There is also a button control called submit request. If you explore the on select function of this button, it submits the form. And if that is successful, the form control has an on success function. I would like to navigate the user back to the home screen, screen one. I also need buttons to allow the user to step through the different parts of my form. I'll select the form container and in this go and insert a horizontal container. The horizontal container, flexible height, I'll turn off and give it a defined height of let's say 50. The submit button, right click, cut, select the horizontal container, right click, paste. And in this horizontal container, I'll go and insert two more button controls. The first one, I'll set the text as previous. And the second button that I added, I'll set its text as next. The submit request button, I'll reorder it and move it to the end. This horizontal container, I would want all the buttons to be positioned in the center, vertical alignment center, and there should be some gap between the buttons. The previous and next buttons, I'll change its style. I'll set it as subtle. The previous button should be visible only when my variable is greater than one. My next button should be visible where step is not equal to my last step, which is four. And the submit button visible where step is equal to four. The next button on select of this, I would like to increase the step count. And I will do that by setting my variable where step to where step plus one. I'll preview, click next, takes me to the second step of my form and shows the columns that I configured to be visible in part two of my form. The previous button on select, I will reduce my step variable value by one. Click previous, it's part one of the form. Next, part two, next. Part three, next, the last part of my form. Now I see submit request. The sidebar container, I will go ahead and reorder this and move it to the start. So it moves to the left. In here, there is a text control it's called reviewers. I'll change this to steps. And there is a gallery whose items property is an array of data. I'll keep the step number, name, I'll set it to travel info, title and status, I will remove, current variable is equal to one. And the same process, I simply have to repeat for my other steps. My second step, I'll call it travel details, current will be where step equal to two. Third step, I'll call it airfare hotel. And my fourth step, I will call it attachments. I can also add emojis in here. That will result in some errors because I modified the schema of the items property. One of the errors is related to a text control in this gallery that was displaying the title. I'll go ahead and delete that. There is the modern batch control content for this this item dot step to show the step number base palette color. All I'm doing here is setting the color of the badge based upon where I am in this multi-step process. In this gallery, there is also a rectangle shape control. It's width. I will set it to three. I'll go ahead and reduce its height. 
the visible property for this rectangle shape this item dot step is not equal to 4 so if i preview i can clearly see that there are four steps as part of this form process first one is travel info if i click next this turns green and i'm on the second step now which is travel details the text here it says request approval I don't need that, so I'll remove it. And my horizontal container, if I would like to put on the top of the form, I can simply reposition this on the top. Now notice as part of my data source, there are certain data cards that are required. And the required field validations here will only come in effect when the user actually goes and submits the form. Now when submit request is clicked, there is logic to submit the form, but also reset the form. Comment out the reset form section. So note when I hit submit, it doesn't submit. And the reason that it has not submitted is, is if I go back to the previous parts of the form, you'll notice that there are required field validations that have triggered and the user needs to fill these in. Now let's go back to the home screen and come back again to a new form experience. In the header of my second screen, header has an on select logo function. Navigate to my home screen. So click, I'm on my home screen. I click new, I'm back to my form screen. On select of the next button, if where step is equal to one and my data card for title here, I'll copy its name, paste it right here, valid. Now I'll put a not in front of this. So if this is not valid, travel type, I'll copy its name. Since I have more cards, I want to combine this check of whether they are not valid in an OR condition. The names of the cards can have spaces. So best to put the names of the cards in single quotes, valid. This is for where step one, put a brackets around this. So if it is the first step, and if either of these cards are not valid, in that case, I would like to show the validation message so what I'll do right here is I'll purposely go ahead and submit the form. I know it won't submit because the validation will click in. Else, you go ahead and increase the step. Format text. I'll click next. Notice those cards are not valid. I have to fill the information in. Now if I click next, it will move me to the next part of the form. Now on this part of the form, if I click next, it shouldn't move ahead if there are required fields. Back to the same next button that I have, I'll write an OR condition. I'll literally just copy the first code because it's going to be similar. I want step two. Here I have two data cards that I want to check its validity for. Go on ahead and plugged in that logic. Now if I hit next, it won't move ahead until I fill in the start date and the end date. Now, if I click next, move ahead to the next part of the form. And this time, if I click submit, it will go ahead and submit the data, lead me to the home screen. And here is the new entry that got created. If I click new request, I am back to the same process for creating a new travel request. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.